what's an experience you've had that you can't explain with logic? Serious, when I was real young, I'd spend time in the country with my cousin. We found an old set of golf clubs in one of the many abandoned barns around the area. We used to pretend were swords, or whatever this was the mid to late 90s. We stored them at the house weeks before. We went from one abandoned barn to another to its basement. It wasn't scary the floor above we rotted through, so it was very well lit. It was lined with these 2 or 3 foot tall concrete circles, and they were empty with dirt at the bottom. After exploring it a little, my cousin realized he forgot his golf club, so we couldn't play whatever silly video game inspired game we planned, so he opted to walk back to the house. So I leaned up against one of those concrete circles, and watched him walk back, as the house was within eye shot. As he was walking up the step to his house, I heard a strange, low, unearthly voice say my name, Borealis. Hey, Borealis, I need to show you something. I froze. I held my club tight against my body and it kept getting louder and stranger sounding. It wasn't any voice I'd recognized. And again, I cannot stress now alien it sounded. Not demonic. Not scary. Even. Just unlike anything I can even describe. It was coming from the concrete circle I was leaning against. Getting louder still. So finally, I turned around with my golf club held above my head and step up on this bucket to peek inside, and, nothing. In the same moment, I heard my cousin running back, coming from the house. I ran to him, we searched the place together and there was nothing. No signs of footsteps, no disturbed dirt or anything, that would suggest anyone had ever been there at all. There are two things that f me up about this story beyond the situation itself. 1. There was no way for anyone or anything to get behind me, or above me, while the floor above was rotted out. Sunshine lit everything, and it was in the very back corner, so there were walls on both sides, all the way up to the second floor with no door or windows. Second, it was saying my real name. No one calls me my real name. My white family can't pronounce it and many of them don't know it. I've ran it through my head for decades and all I can imagine is it was some brain synapse misfiring or something. When I was a teenager, I was home from school and a young girl started screaming my name in the middle of the house. Over and over, there was no young girl there, nor did I know one. The house was completely empty. When I was about 13 years old, I live in the middle of nowhere in front of a lake BTW. Me and a friend at the time, were camping directly in front of my house in a tent. At one point we wanted to go in and grab our yearbooks, but as we did we looked at the sky, no light pollution, we saw something moving funny, and as I pointed at it, it did a zigzag in the sky and vanished, freaked us out, and we ran in, my mom told us to go back out, and we did, later that night the tent lit up green we froze and kinda freaked, but that was it, then we woke up the next day, weird was a long time ago but it still sticks with me to this day. A few months back I fell asleep on the couch, in the middle of the night the house alarm goes off, one of the doors leading outside has opened, I get up, turn off the alarm, and check the house, the door leading from the laundry room into the garage, is wide open, I think to myself, WTF, that's weird, because I was pretty sure I locked it and even then, how did it just randomly open? So I close it, lock it, then check the house making sure it wasn't a break in or something like that. No one is there. I reset the alarm. I had just fallen asleep when the alarm goes off again. This time I'm scared. I jump up, turn off the alarm, run to the laundry room again. Once again, the door is wide open. I'm literally getting chills remembering this. I thoroughly search the entire house, even checking the closets. I'm convinced someone is in the house. No one is f fine there, I can't explain it. One minute the door is locked, the next it's wide open. I once dreamed that I was on a walk in an area I've only walked once, halfway across the island from where I live, telling someone that I was going to college B. When I woke up I was confused, since the road wasn't generally used for walking, and I was planning to go to college A from, since I was young and college B was never an option, because of the distance. So I forgot about the dream. About a year later due to course offerings I decided to go to college B. And I kid you not. We went on a special walking event about 2 weeks later. Someone asked me what college I'm going to. And I told them I was going to college B at the exact stretch of road I dreamed of. When I experienced the deja vu I thought back and remembered the dream. 
my parents live on 5 acres in Michigan, with the nearest neighbor about a mile away. Otherwise it's all cornfields, creeks, and forest around them. In 2015 I was staying with them for a period of time, along with my dog. One night in early fall, after midnight and long after my parents were in bed, I was curled up on my bed reading. My dog was right next to me, head in my lap sleeping, when I heard an incredibly loud, blood-curdling scream. This scream was unlike one I've ever heard it sounded female and absolutely terrified tortured, even like something horrific was happening to the person it was coming from, and it sounded like it came right from living room, or at least from somewhere inside the house. If I had been the only one to hear it, I probably would have chalked it up to an electrical misfiring between my brain and ears, or something else, but my dog absolutely heard it too. She went from snoring, to being on full alert. Hackles raised, noise pointed at the bedroom door. Opening the door she simply refused to leave the room, and go check the house with me. I think that scared me the most. Her aversion was visible in 12 years together I've never seen her hackles raised like that before, or since from neck to toe, like a rigid mohawk. She wasn't going to pass the threshold from my room to the hallway. If she had anything to say about it, I did check the living room and all the other rooms. There was nothing. No animals in the yard. My parents didn't hear a thing. But me and my best girl absolutely did. And I've never been able to explain it. I keep my cat's bowls up on one of the bar areas during the summer. Since I tend to get ants. One morning I went to fill their bowl and found that it was missing from the counter. I briefly searched for it, thinking my cat knocked to the floor out of protest for it being empty, but after searching the immediate area, I couldn't find it, so I fed them in another bowl. After work I started a more intensive search and basically looked through my entire, small, condo but it was completely missing. I was a little bit worried, because I live alone, so things moving on their own or without my knowledge, is definitely concerning in a number of ways. About two weeks later I was sitting on the couch, when I heard a crashing sound behind me. I got up to check, and found the food bowl sitting on the counter. With food still in it, I seriously have zero explanation. There is nowhere for it to have been hidden or tucked into because it's literally a flat counter. There is nothing above it for it to have fallen from. There is no way food would still have been in it. Had it been sitting there for two weeks, because my cats are fattuses, the counter is literally in full view at every point in the condo, except for the bedrooms. I have tried to rationalize it, and I just can't. This is something that has puzzled me for the longest time. But one day I was in the living room on the couch watching TV and my mom was in the kitchen digging through the junk drawer. The living room was connected to the kitchen. So I could see her, when all of a sudden she makes a noise and turns out she pricked her finger on like a thumbtack or something. But at the exact moment I also felt a weird poke in my finger. Turns out I was bleeding on the finger, that she had pricked. And I hadn't done anything at all but sit at the couch. I can explain every weird or seemingly paranormal experience with logic, except this one instance. It really creeped me out. I was 12, me and another buddy of mine went over to a friend's house to hang out. It was full, so we went outside to go rake up leaves to jump into. He had a pretty big backyard, so we decided it would be best to spread out and get all the leaves into one big pile. So we go into different directions. Me going towards the pool he had. There was a chain link fence surrounding the outside of the pool that I began raking around when I stopped held onto the fence with my right hand, and turned around to talk to one of my friends. To this day I'm still not entirely sure what happened to me that day, but when I turned around, and looked at my hand, it wasn't on the fence anymore. My hand had somehow gone through it, as if the fence didn't exist. To make it more clear of what this looked, like in my perspective, the fence itself was going through my hand. When I saw this, I immediately shouted. They asked me what happened, and I told them that I don't know, and that somehow my hand was inside the fence, and then it wasn't. It was really scary. When my family was moving out of one of our houses my dad, and I stayed late one night, to finish packing up the master bedroom, we were disassembling their bed, when we heard someone say my dad's name. In the moment neither one of us said something we just kind of looked at each other like, back quote did you hear that, but kept going. After a couple of minutes I couldn't stay quiet anymore I asked him, if he heard that, and his face went dead serious, 
I think he was hoping I didn't hear it, so he could just brush it off. And we both just stood in silence for 5 minutes listening, and heard nothing more. We had been having weird experiences in the house the whole time we lived there but this was the most convincing. It was like the voice came from inside your head, because it sounded like it was coming from everywhere. After our pause we packed as fast as we could, and that was the last time in the house we lived far away from other people and nobody was around. Weirdest thing I have ever experienced, that I can't explain. We later learned, that not the previous owner but the one, before had committed suicide in the house. It always had this airy atmosphere, like you were being watched, and that the space back quote wasn't yours, like you were in someone else's house. We talk about it every couple of years. I'm a little late here, but I somehow, intuitively knew my dad was going to die. He wasn't ill or old. A little over a month before he died, I was living with my parents, and getting ready to move out of state for the first time. I told my mom I was scared dad would die while I was gone. I was so upset and crying about it, completely unconsolable. She told me it was silly. He was healthy, the healthiest he had been in decades. He had been really stressed about money, but he always seemed so happy still. That was late August. He died October 23rd with Amaka heart attack. No signs or symptoms. Look the ear doctor in the eye and died. Just like that. He was an amazing amazing man my best friend his funeral was full with people standing in the back of a big crowded room couple of days ago i had five and a half hours just disappear from me i woke up at 9 a.m puttered around the house for a while at 12 i sat on the couch to look at some memes blinked and it was 5 30 p.m according to my dad i'd just been sitting there staring at nothing for five and a half hours it wasn't even a second to me. My brain just shut off. I wasn't short on sleep. I wasn't sick. I was once with three of my friends riding to go meet up with our other coworkers at a party. We got to the building and all loaded into the elevator. Then we hear a thunk. We all look down and see a full glass of orange juice unspilled now in the middle of the elevator. That was not there when we got in. We all looked up at the same time then back down at it. The only drinks we were carrying was a case of beer. No one had orange juice, let alone a loose cup of it. We did not touch it just got out at our stop. To this day I wonder where it came from. One time when I was little, my mom woke me up from a dead sleep in the middle of the night to ask if I had used the bathroom across the hallway. I said no. She said that either me or my brother must be lying then. Because he also said he hadn't used the bathroom. But she heard running footsteps in the hallway. My mom went to both of our rooms to ask us who used the bathroom. Because when she walked outside her room to tell whoever was running to be quiet, the hallway was empty. It couldn't have been my dad because he was away on a business trip. Just as she was starting a lecture about not waking people up at night, the running footsteps were heard again and again. There was no one in the hallway. I still remember sitting up on my bed, looking through my open door into the pitch black hole with the pounding of the disembodied footsteps. The worst part was they sounded like they were coming towards my room. A bonus one that was eventually debunked in the same house as where the footsteps story happened. We have an old piano in the downstairs living room. I'd be woken up at night by the sound of piano keys banging loudly and chaotically. The rest of my family would hear it too. For a while, I thought we had our very own haunted piano like the haunted houses in movies. But it turned out that a family of mice had moved in somewhere deep within the instrument. And they'd run across the keys at night. Was living alone. Woke up in the middle of the night hearing some weird noises from downstairs. My cassette tape of Led Zeppelin 4 was playing Stairway to Heaven. At 3 a.m., for that to happen someone would have to turn on the sound, select tape and press down the play button, all the way down. It wasn't digital, I never sleepwalked, and I know what I saw and heard. Threw away my Led Zeppelin tapes and CDS, and to this day I have nothing from the band, despite considering them the greatest ever. If you read about Jimmy Page beliefs, and especially about the song Stereo Eye to Heaven you will understand why I freaked out. Around 1999 in Phoenix, Arizona, my dad was leaving for work around 4am. He pulled us out of bed and took us outside to look at the sky. 
It was the strangest thing I've seen in all my life as it looked like all the stars in the sky were all grouped together into a much smaller amoeba shape, like all the stars we so closely packed together, and absolute nothingness surrounding the odd shaped cluster of stars. It was like looking into a portal into some other part of the universe. When I was in third grade during recess we snuck off to the cemetery behind the school. It was October getting cold and lots of colorful leaves everywhere which made me happy. Me and three other girls went into a family crypt and noticed a cement casket sized tomb was slightly opened and peeked inside. For some reason I felt like we would see snakes or something. But it was empty. I got the feeling we needed to leave and I started walking back first. I was yelling at the other girls to let's go. When I finally had enough I said let's go now, like my mom did when us kids didn't listen. But as I said it, I stomped my foot down. I didn't know it, but I was standing on a grave and I literally felt this beating or pounding under my feet four times really quickly. What is so weird about it was I felt it, and I heard it, as if someone was banging on a wooden door. I remember jumping up and screaming I looked at the girls and they just stared at me. This was in upstate New York. I'm 36 years old now and can take you to exactly where I was when it happened. When I was living with a GF of 5 years at that point we both had a shared dream experience where we were in some rundown old house. She keep on being chased and attacked by some sort of red fox that was kinda ghostly looking and that one was always being followed by a smaller blue one. Well at any rate, I constantly got in the way and would push back the attacker while she gained more distance. By the end of the dream the red one eventually bit down onto my arm and injured me causing me to get mad and somehow evaporate the red one which made the blue one kind of vanish of its own accord. When we awoke at the same time we filled in little details that we individually remembered but didn't convey. And here is the best part. We both had scratches and red marks on our bodies where we received injuries in the shared dream. September of this year, there was a power outage at my house. So the power was out all day. At the time I was sleeping in the den cause my bedroom was infested. So, I was about to go to sleep and I was about to put my headphones in. But they were dead, so I had to suffer. I had the whole house to myself so no one was there and no one was outside. But I heard a feminine voice whispering in my ear. I dk what it said cause it was in a different language but it still spooked me. I grew up in a house that was incredibly haunted. And by something really nasty, a lot of inexplicable stuff happened. But if I had to narrow it down to one event, I'd pick one of the most disturbing incidents that happened. This didn't happen directly to me. But I was a witness to the immediate aftermath and I saw the injuries caused. As I mentioned, whatever was in the house was nasty, nightmares, horrible feelings of dread, the cat going insane at things we couldn't see, horrible slash stressful smells like rotten thick smoke, things spotted in mirrors, loud bangs slash footsteps slash threatening laughter, bites and scratches appearing on our skin, real horror movie and this is just what I can explain succinctly. One night. About 10 p.m., my mom is in the shower, dad is downstairs, my twin sister and I are in our rooms. Suddenly there's this scream and an almighty bang it's important to note that the scream came before the bang. Though at the time we just heard the noise and panicked because it sounded like mom had fallen really hard in the shower. We go to the door and knock asking if she's okay and the door flies open and our mom practically sprints out holding a towel loosely around herself, not even properly rinsed off. I looked into the bathroom and I could hear the shower was still running, and the shower curtain was still pulled around the tub, stuck to the side of the bath with water. About half an hour later, Mam told us what had happened. She had been showering, when she felt hands grab her upper arms, hard, like the nails were digging right in. Instinctively she tried to step away, but it had then picked her up physically off where she was standing in the tub this is when she screamed and bodily hurled her out of the tub she was thrown literally across the room and crashed against the wall mounted heater somehow this was accomplished without the shower curtain being moved at all like she had just gone right through it a couple of days later she showed us the bruises from where she landed her upper arm and whole hip on her right side was a nasty bruise some of it in the pattern of the raised sections of the heater. We had all known something effed up was going on for years by that point. But none of us expected that. I still cannot explain it. It all happened so quickly the shower curtain was undisturbed. The scream that came several whole seconds before the bang of her landing. 
It honestly scares the hell out of me even now. Needless to say I'm glad everyone has since moved out of that place. When my sister and I were 10 and 12, we were up late watching Saturday Night Live in our family room. Our little brother, he was 4 at the time, used to sleepwalk. We saw him walk across the living room floor. The family room was an addition to the living room, made it kind of one big room separated by a step and head to the kitchen door. He'd left the house through this door before while sleepwalking. Without saying a word, my sister and I looked at each other and got up to put him back to bed. We went to the kitchen and he wasn't there. The kitchen was about 20 feet from his room, so we peeked in his room and saw him sound asleep. I asked my sister did she see him too. She said yeah he walked across the living room into the kitchen. We both saw him. We are not sure what happened. When I was a freshman in college I lived in an apartment complex just off campus. One night around 11 p.m. I was writing an essay when I heard a woman's yelp of fright slash alarm a thud and then a chorus of tumbling thuds. I immediately thought somebody just got thrown down the stairs. The sequence of noises was so distinctive that I immediately grabbed the closest weapon I had to hand, a maglite flashlight, and ran out my door and down the breezeway to the stairwell. I saw no one on the stairs, no one down on the ground floor below, no one walking out in the parking lot, no sign of anyone or anything at all. For a moment I thought I was crazy, then I heard a door downstairs, I thought someone might be trying to hide what happened, so I charged downstairs, only to encounter two other guys, one armed with a baseball bat, both looking wide eyed and alarmed just like me, did you hear, I began, yeah, like someone fell down the stairs. Right. The guy with the bat answered. His roommate had already called the cops. They were en route. But we couldn't find any sign of the altercation all three of us had heard. We went door to door. We checked on all our neighbors. There were three stories to the building. Four apartments per floor. We checked all ten other apartments beside our own. No one was hurt. A couple of people were annoyed to have been woken up. Cops arrived. Brief interview. Quick look around. Check with the other residents same as we did. Nothing. There was no blood anywhere on the stairwell. The cops asked us if we'd heard anything like running footsteps or squealing tires. Anything to suggest someone fled the scene. We had not. We just heard the sounds of someone yelling, then falling down the stairs. Then nothing. We were never able to make sense of it or figure it out. The best explanation I can come up with is that either someone drunk fell down the stairs and then got up and staggered away, or else someone in the building had fallen down the stairs and lied about it afterward. Neither of these seems very reasonable, because there was no way for a drunk girl who fell down the stairs to get away unseen across the big open parking lot, and we all laid eyes on everyone else in the building and nobody showed any sign of just having taken a header down the stairs. Easily the most bizarre and unsettling experience of my college years. This moment stuck with me for a long time. I was around 6 when it happened, so I don't know if it was just my childhood imagination or something else. We were moving into a new home, and during move-in I accidentally locked myself in the bathroom. And no matter what I did, or my dad on the other side of the door did we couldn't unlock it. And I turned around, and was looking at the bathtub. And I swear on my life it looks like a half-burned corpse was peeking over the shower curtains, and staring at me. I was screaming for like maybe around 5 minutes staring at and eventually my dad was able to open the door and it just kinda disappeared. Like I don't remember looking away from it, or is it moving? It's always such a weird thing I remember, because at this time I don't think I watched any horror movies, or had seen anything like that. I don't remember any other experiences like this at this house so that's why I'm always was so confused. About 8 to 9 years ago me and a friend are walking home from school together like we always did talking about random sh**. I turn around and notice a lady in her 20s walking the same direction as we are carrying her shopping bags. I turn back and tell him that a hot lady is behind us. He does the obvious full body turn and says oh yeah she's not bad a couple minutes pass and I want another glimpse. So I turn back and notice a lady has aged about 50 years. Same clothes same shopping in hand but she's visibly so much more older. I turn back horrified and tell him he's as shocked as I am. To clarify it could not be a different lady. The road we took to go home only had one path along the road and either side of the road were fields. So we would see someone come off the path and onto the field and the path. 
to walk from one end to another took 10 minutes roughly so there would be no way she got out of sight, and for an older lady, to appear in the short time I turned for a second look, still pretty weird even all these years later. Laying in bed, and I felt a presence by the door I couldn't tell how I felt about said presence so ignored it, but I felt it was coming closer, so I rolled over to face my other half and cuddle him. Then I felt somebody sit on the bed behind me, as if they sat with their back to me facing the wall the pressure of the sitting down pulled the covers tight on me, and I even tilted slightly towards them. It freaked me out somewhat, and I pushed tighter to my boyfriend a few moments past then I felt the pressure go off the bed and the covers and mattress acted like somebody stood up from sitting too, and then the presence I could feel left the room. The next morning I told my other half's mum honestly expecting her to laugh or make a joke as unlike me, she doesn't believe in the paranormal or spirit world, but she went stone cold pale, and explained the same happened to her that night also. She too felt the presence in the room doing near then it sitting on the bed before leaving. I hadn't long lost my mum, nan, granddad and dog, and I lost my uncle in 2009. I also hadn't long moved my dog's body to my partner's house and brought the urns home. So I like to think it was one of my family checking in.